We've called these shoes ugly for years. Time Magazine once featured them on their 50 worst inventions list in 2010. The Washington Post even compared them to vermin in a 2006 article. The market has spoken. These shoes are not nice to look at at all. But somehow, Crocs manages to become one of the most iconic footwear brands of our generation. So what's really behind the success of Crocs? In this video, we're going to explore the art of selling ugly. On a trip in the Caribbean in 2002, three longtime friends, Scott Siemens, George Bodeker, and Lyndon Hayson, came up with the idea of Crocs. The trio enjoyed sailing and came across a new boating clog made by a Canadian company, Foam Creations. They were amazed by how comfortable the shoes were while being in the water, and they each saw the opportunity of bringing these to the market. After licensing the shoe design and going after a few investors, Crocs was officially born. These plastic clogs started out as a product designed for boating only, but later word spread to doctors, waiters, and chefs who found the shoe perfect for their job functions. They're water resistant and super easy to slide on. The material, Cross Light, is lightweight and easy to clean. It's not hard to see why anyone who was on their feet all day wanted a pair. Even President George Bush was a fan. Because of the practicality, Crocs found great success in the first few years of operations. Their revenue hit $300 million in 2006. They even went public in the same year. Things were looking fantastic for Crocs, or at least that's what management thought. In 2008, Crocs found themselves in big financial trouble. They reportedly lost $185 million, cut 2,000 jobs, and closed multiple stores around the world. The recession might have contributed to the declining demand, but analysts also believed that the appeal of Crocs was fading significantly. People reignited their hatred towards the shoe's questionable appearance, and Crocs completely fell out of trend. People thought the shoe was profitable only because it was a trendy thing at the time. Now that the ship has sailed, this might really be the end of them. However, there's more to the story. Almost a decade later, new CEO Andrew Reese took over Crocs in 2017. He knew that his priority was to make Crocs relevant again in order to be profitable. Instead of sticking with the old marketing strategies, Reese made a bold move by turning Crocs into a fashion brand rather than a functional footwear company. To make their way into the fashion world, they partnered with designers to send a pair of bright pink Crocs with four-inch platforms down the runway at Paris Fashion Week. The stunt definitely made headlines and sparked a rejuvenated interest in the brand, but not in the most positive light. Fashion critics raised their eyebrows when they saw the shoes. Memes making fun of the shoes flared up everywhere on social media. Although the public's reactions were mixed, at least the marketing tactic brought Crocs back to the spotlight again. Things got taken to a new height when Crocs collaborated with rapper Post Malone in 2018. The collab sold out in under two hours and became one of that year's most coveted shoes. Some shoes were even sold for hundreds on the secondary market. Following the success, Crocs teamed up with other popular celebrities like Justin Bieber and Bad Bunny for more collaborations. Each drop was a success and has done wonders for re-establishing the brand's reputation. Because of the shift, Crocs bounced back from the brink of bankruptcy to become one of the world's most popular fashion giants within a decade. Revenue skyrocketed, stock prices quadrupled. Guys, it's happening. Crocs are hot again. Although amazing, Crocs' bounce back story has made people scratch their heads. Their shoe design didn't change much from the beginning. People hated them then, and people hate them now. Yet, after a slight marketing redirection, Crocs then suddenly became the industry's darling? Some analysts believe that the success was due to their switch of industry. Before rebranding as a fashion brand, Crocs mainly advertised their shoes for their great functionality. They took a lot of pride in the fact that their shoes were designed to be comfortable and durable, qualities that inspired the trio to start their company in the first place. They wanted to advertise Crocs as a necessity good in the market. With that in mind, they targeted consumers with specific professions or people who do specific activities that needed these shoes. Although those are great functional qualities for a product, they cannot bring sustainable business for Crocs. Their original marketing model was based on needs. Once that particular need is fulfilled, there's not a practical reason to purchase another pair. Also, these plastic shoes are too durable. Since they don't break easily, customers don't see the need to purchase another pair to replace the old ones. Some analysts argue that this low inventory turnover time was also a major factor that put Crocs in a bad position in 2008. They poured money into piling up the inventory, but no one was buying them. And of course, Crocs being perceived as ugly didn't help either. No one wanted to buy a pair because they didn't want the stigma that came along with them. As a result, the allure of Crocs faded when the recession hit. The people at Crocs actually were well aware of their shoes being called ugly. 
CEO Andrew Reese once said, if you have a brand that has a lot of haters, that makes it even more interesting to collaborate with. Crocs decided to go against the grain. They saw the wonderful opportunity to capitalize this hatred and fully embrace the ugliness of their products. There are only a few industries where ugly products are celebrated, and fashion is one of them. Ugly sells well in fashion because designers love to challenge standards and push boundaries, and they see ugliness as an attempt to defy the mold. In fashion, we can throw all the normal consumer behaviors out the window. Consumers see aesthetic value differently in fashion, and somehow, Crocs thrived in this environment by being ugly. When designer Christopher Kane collaborated with Crocs, he responded to critics by saying, if we dumbed everything down to traditional ideas of beauty, then we wouldn't be where we are today. Nothing would move forward. Suddenly, fashion gives a new meaning to Crocs' ugliness. Their shoe is no longer being stigmatized. It's now hip, it's stylish, and it's rebellious. By moving Crocs from the necessity goods category to being a fashion item, consumers have more of an incentive to purchase more Crocs. They are no longer shoes that you wear only at work or for certain activities. They are now a fashion statement. It's a way to express yourself. Anyone who wants to stand out can find value in buying Crocs. Whether you like them or hate them, Crocs shoes are here to stay. This iconic footwear brand turned what's supposed to be a weakness into an asset. Selling ugly is an art, and Crocs masters it well.